Welcome to Fluent and Chill. We are here tonight. You guys know about Tony Tone, my man Tony Tone, and AKA H Boogie. We are in the house, but we have a surprise for you this evening. One of my good friends, former NBA player, all time Big East scoring leader, Terry DeHair, is in the house. T, what's up, brother? What's happening, Chill? Uh -huh. right. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> So, uh, Terry, I'll explain real quick. We are live on YouTube, so we have a chat uh, that is also with us today. So um, we might get some comments from them that we'll post to you. But for the most part, we just want to hear how you're doing now, how's how's life going now, but also just give us kind of a just a deep dive into your career, what it was like playing in college, obviously uh, in the league, and then and then after. So yeah, share a little bit about how you're doing now, what's going on, and and then we'll get into the earlier on stuff. Look, well, well, you went right into. You just made a really yeah. broad, maybe a, a, a white canvas. No, well, what uh, they gonna do, T? I tell you what, <laughs> this is this is what they do because they don't know you. So this is what I'm gonna do. Let's get right to the oh, oh. babies of it. I met Terry. I, that's and I what met. I was gonna ask is how do yeah. we not start with okay. how do you guys know each other? I think is the first I, I, question. I, I, I met Terry in the 10th grade. Um, we both from the same city, and the way I ended up at the at the high school that we both went to was he was the one who told me because of the high school that I was at, I wasn't really going anywhere. He was the one who told me get <laughs> out of there and go here. He was the one who did that to me. So with that being said, I met Terry in the 10th grade. We met through basketball. We basically took a liking to each other. We started hanging out, and it just materialized from there, man. So Terry had one of those one of those work ethics that you can't really explain. So, yo, T, can you talk to can you talk to me a little bit about how it started with you in terms of your basketball career? How did it start? Well, well, actually, um, it started with I think it was my uh, my next door neighbor happened to be the uh, the area's bitty basketball coach. Yep. And we're, uh, his name was Roy Oil at the time. Mm -hmm. And he lived next door. And, you know, a couple of young guys was hanging out next door. We think we were nine and ten years old at the time. He told us to come out for the team. And we was like, oh, yeah, you know, we're going to make it was at PS12 school. You know, PS12. Mm -hmm. They said, you know, that was a huge tryout. So he told us to show up at 6 o'clock to the mm -hmm. gym. Neighbors. So I said, okay, cool. So me and my guy, uh, rest his soul, uh, George Dunbar, mm -hmm. we go to the gym. So when we get to the gym and we look into the little glass window, we see that it's like a hundred kids in there trying oh. out 15 spots. <laughs> so we, we looked at the window and said, we ain't got a shot this one. <laughs> we turned around and we went back home. So just by him living next door, he came, you know, next door. He said, hey, why you got to the gym? I said, well, coach, I don't know, man. It just, you had too many guys in there. And it looked like, you know, it was a place for us. Mm -hmm. Come on in, come on in. Next time, just show up. Uh, we showed up, and after we took the light into the game, uh, it had a lot of uh, really good basketball players that lived on my block, you know, yeah. that went to college, that played Division One basketball at the time, and, and also attended St. Anthony's High School. Mm -hmm. So it was a blueprint there for younger kids when they were uh, adapting into that sport. We had some uh, success stories that we could look at and, and – and, and try to go from there. And I think growing up in that area, as you know, we had probably about maybe seven to 10 pros in like a five block radius. Yeah, so, we did. Wow. Uh, you know, growing up back then, you know, those those street games was really competitive. Yes, they were. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so, so let me so let me ask you guys. So you guys, it's, it's Jersey, right? For those that don't know. Yeah, it is Jersey. Right. Okay. So who, you said there were a lot of pros. Who are some of those, who are some of those pros that you guys were just running into on the block? Oh, you got you had David Rivers, uh, drafted by the Lakers. You had Raphael Addison, uh, Rashawn McLeod, uh, Roger Rhodes, uh, Luke the Right, myself, uh, Bobby Hurley, um, and and uh, uh, Jerry Walker. We, we had we had a lot of uh, people that played professional ball in like a four block radius. So what we used to do, high school kids, because uh, as you know. I should have told you we was the number one high school team in the country at the time, uh, preseason going into the uh, 1989 season. And what we were doing in high school, we had a we used to travel with our whole starting team to different basketball courts and just play different people in different areas. And it just seemed like 
as we got a little older, because we were playing together since we were like nine, 10 years old, all of us actually. Bobby Hurley played uh, the point guard when he was 10 years old. I played the two guard when I was 10. Jerry played the three when he was 10 years old. We was already in our positions at a young age and we just kind of grew into it. And then what we found out, we became the, the basketball, the Jersey City just became everywhere we went, everyone was watching us play. And all of a sudden it just, it just, it just snowballed and snowballed into the season. And, you know, like, uh, Chill said, I, I seen this, I seen him, he was a little younger than me and I seen him playing and I was like, hold up, this guy <laughs> play, <laughs> you know, wait a minute. Like, Whoa. We, you know, we on this side of St. Anthony, you know, we think we the only uh, good basketball players in the area, you know, we don't really think about anybody else. But for some reason I gravitated to him because I see how his work ethic was. He was a hard worker, he's very athletic and he went, he played really hard. And I know that when I saw him, I knew that his situation at the time, I think he could do a little better. And, you mm -hmm. know, as you can see, he's doing a lot better. So that <laughs> hey. see, it's, it's interesting you mentioned that too, Steve, because you talked about the high school basketball aspect of it. Talk about how you ended up at St. Anthony and what that did for your career. Well, well, basically, I ended up at St. Anthony's basically it was like a fluke. It wasn't like I was recruited out of the eighth grade, anything to play basketball. Right. It just, uh, it was like th three guys going, three guys from the neighborhood on the bus stop going to St. Anthony. So my mother figured, hey, that'd be a safe place to go with those three guys, be right. a, a Catholic school. Mm -hmm. Who knew, you know, we heard stories of Coach Hurley, you know, you know, before we got there, not really knowing what to expect. But uh, St. Anthony's at a 13 year old kid. I mean, he demanded so much from us at age 13. Uh, it, it it helped us, you know, become uh, players, you know, mm -hmm. the demand that was put on. So we played basketball 24 hours a day, 365. Yeah. It was no downtime. You know, we played straight for about six, seven years. Yeah. You know? wow. So um, I think that playing in that type of competitive uh, atmosphere at St. Anthony's, Every day going against the Bobby and uh, Jerry, the all Americans you see, you got Jay and his younger crew. They all, everyone was pretty good. We had we players, we had about out of 60 players, we probably had 58 Division One players. And the other, go oh, because they decided they just didn't want to go to college. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So your your uh, Jay and and Terry, your your paths crossed early on, but mm -hmm. then Jay did so, so. Did you end up going? over to St. Uh, I did. St. I ended Andrews up going well. to St. Anthony. So How old were you at that point? Were you a, a sophomore? I, I met Terry in the 10th grade and okay. I'm glad you I'm glad you brought that up too, T, because T, if you could talk if you could talk a little bit about that 89 team. I watched a documentary not long ago, T, about uh Dunbar High School being the best high school basketball team in the country. Meanwhile, there's a team in Jersey City in the 1988-89 season that went 31 and 0. I had three guys that were first round picks and that was from St. Anthony High School and that was you guys. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, we we going to start talking, but it's 32 and no. I'm sorry, not 31 and no. I, I, I called them. Oh, that extra game. Oh, oh, miss that extra oh, game. That's, that's very uh, important to mention. You're going to get knocked out. 31 and 32 and no. I'm 32 sorry. 32 and no. <laughs> add, this, add to this to the fire. We had no home court. We had no Zero. home court. No, Zero. we didn't. Court advantage. So we go on the road and get you. We go at your place. We come to your place and get you. Yeah. <laughs> so, wow. All right. Yeah. So that's how we. Yeah. So I ended up with Terry again. And after the 10th grade, I ended up going over to play at St. Anthony at the advice of Terry. He was the one who told me that because I wasn't where I was. It wasn't really good enough for me for my skill set and what I needed to learn and what and how far I thought I could play. But then, you know, being from Jersey, to, to bring it back to Terry, Terry being from Jersey, T, how did, of all the places, because again, you played at St. Anthony, 32-0, and 0, best high school basketball team in the country, major recruiting going on all over the place. How did Seton Hall end up being the spot? Was that always the place? Did you always want to stay home or did you want to, were you interested in going somewhere else? No, I think that I was, I had my options open. Yeah. Um, I think that, you know, growing up in, on the, in Northeast, you tend to uh, see a lot of Big East games. Yeah. And at the time growing up, I, I, uh, I watched the Syracuse game and I seen Pearl Washington play. Yeah. I and after I seen him play, it was like, wow, this guy's amazing. Yeah. And I 
kids talking about him in the, uh, you know, walk in the class in the hallways. And I, I just felt like, wow, I wanted, I wanted to, I wanted to feel that way or, or be in that position at one point. And, yeah. you know, I had choices. Uh, it came down to North Carolina, uh, UVA, University of Virginia, mm-hmm. and Seton Hall. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Seton Hall at the time would have gave me the best opportunity to play right away, mm-hmm. you know. And I think that you know, you you know, you could have your dream school, but you want to <laughs> want to play at your dream school. You know what of I mean? Course. So, yeah. I always I always laugh when people uh, when coaches uh, tell you that uh, that you're going to be able to do certain things uh, when you get to a school. I tend to say, well, if I'm a two guard. What I would do is I would just look at the two guards from last year mm-hmm. and we the shots he was able to get in that offense. <laughs> <laughs> Which is Tone. That, that, that's Tone, by the way. Tone is the shooter. Tone is the one who, oh. no question about that. When, when you're looking for shots, Tone is that guy. So Yeah, if you want to get a shot, you better hope I'm on the bench because <laughs> I, never, I never saw a shot I didn't like. <laughs> that's definitely it. <laughs> T, can, T, can you talk a little about, can you talk a little bit about your transition from St. Anthony to the Big East and how much were you were prepared for it and was there anything that you were shocked about when you first got there? Oh man, it was it was amazing. I, I think that me being able to play at Seton Hall at an early age, yeah. it, being on the floor, I got to see all the guys that I was watching for years. Like, you know, it, it was it was a shock also to, to go to John Thompson mm-hmm. and I'm a freshman or walking in that building. And then their front line was like uh, at center they had Dikembe Mutombo, they had uh, Alonzo at the four, they had mm-hmm. Sam Jefferson at the three at six ten, they had Mark Tillman and Dwayne Bryant in the back court. So that's mm-hmm. a first. That was like my first freshman uh, Big East game, and our first four possessions, <laughs> our first four possessions of that game, we had three offensive. Uh, Three uh three second violation calls and we had the. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought I thought you were gonna say we got blocked three times because when you got uh, going we, to Kimpe down there, I'm not even going down. Yeah, you pump faking. <laughs> we pump faking that three seconds. I never. Wow. <laughs> see, see, that's why I shot. I'm not going down there with those guys. Yeah, I know it. <laughs> it was yeah. no good situation down there. Trust me, it was dark down there. It was scary. Yeah. <laughs> have to go up to Syracuse and you got to run into Derek Coleman, Billy Owen, Stevie Thompson. Mm-hmm. I, that was like, well, the, the, it's interesting you also mentioned that too, T, because the Big East was a powerhouse. The Big East is basically the SEC in football today, back in the 90s. That's what the Big East was. And with that being said, I mean, you were Big East Player of the Year, T. I mean, you were the, you were the Big East Player of the Year. You were also the the MVP of the Big East tournament. Can you talk a little bit about how you were able to do something like that? Well, it, it, it was kind of it was kind of uh, crazy because I never expected to be the player. And nobody projected me to be that type of playing right. college. But what I found out was when I got to college, I had a lot of free time, you know, during classes and stuff like that. And I wasn't a person that partied a lot, so right. I found myself just basically like living in the gym. You know, I became you know uh, basically a gym rat. You know, I I would yeah. have a in my backpack during class where if I had an hour, I will make myself, I'll, I'll make myself to the gym shoot for an hour and go back to class with the ball in the backpack. So right. that's what I, I, I was like, just wired that way. And mm-hmm. St. Anthony's of course helped us uh, uh, along the way, get a little yeah. wide. So I think that's where uh, the separation came with me because I think I, I put a lot into it when mm-hmm. a lot is, a lot of people didn't. And, mm-hmm. To see that a lot of all Americans that was ranked, you know, really high at the time, they pick these schools, and then we end up playing them, and they're on the bench. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm, mm-hmm. I wasn't over, I'm actually playing. I'm mm-hmm. averaging 15 points a game as a freshman, and they're not getting on the court until their junior year. Mm-hmm. By the time my junior year, I'm, you know, it's already a wrap. <laughs> right. It's, 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 I'm glad you brought that up too, T, because now we at your junior year and. The scouts are starting to talk, right? And now they're starting to get chatter about you being the best two guard in the country. And now the pro game is 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 becoming almost a reality. When did you realize, you know what, I might be able to play at the next level? When did that when did that become something that really started to be a reality for you? I think it was after uh I think it was my sophomore season. I think we we're in uh NCAA tournament at the time. Mm-hmm. I, I was I was leading the NCAA tournament scoring. Mm-hmm. 20, 20, 20. 
we uh we had played Arizona. Mm-hmm. Arizona had a really big front line with Sean Rooks, uh, Bryant Williams. Yeah, the crew. They had a real big crew, and and yeah. first uh, the, through the first TV timeout, it was like ten to two, and they had like four dunks. And I remember <laughs> I took a charge on the, on the on one of the point guards, and I fell on the floor. And one of the big guys they dropped it off on the baseline, and all I could see is this ball coming straight down to my face after he dunked the ball, and I said. <laughs> Christ, we are for a long night here. <laughs> but yeah. So happened to, to answer, we came back, we ended up winning that game. And yep. after we, that propelled us, I guess, to go to play a uh, UNLV in the in the final eight. Mm-hmm. And locker room, uh, it was it was so much attention around me, and it was so much talk about how great the game was, you know, and the chat. And then at that moment, I was like, wow, this this could actually happen. Yeah. At point, I said, hey, and that in that locker room after that uh that uh Arizona game, I really felt that it could be a reality. Yeah, nice. Tom. Well, you know I'm gonna get into the, I'm gonna get into the pro stuff. Mm-hmm. Because for those that don't know, when they look at the teams you played for, they, they're gonna ask you this is the first thing that came to my mind before I, you know, before I did my research, because I do my research, but initially I see the Clippers, the Kings, and the Grizzlies, and I think what did you do to David Stern that he put you on that path? <laughs> these these horrible franchises. Now they weren't always that bad, but I'm a Laker fan, so you know I hate the paper clips. But that being said, that being said, for those that do their research, the first round 13 pick, that's impressive. But I just I want to read off this for, for those in the chat that don't know. I'm just gonna read off some names. So you go in as a rookie, you get drafted by the Clippers, 13th overall. Your team makes a trade halfway through. So some of these guys were there at the beginning, some at the end. I just want to throw out some names of the guys that are on your team, your rookie season. Dominique Wilkins gets traded from Atlanta to the Clippers. Oh, by the way, in the 25 games that he started uh, that season for the for the Clippers, he's he's still averaging 29 a game. By the way, Dominique, one of my favorite players, which is why I bring him up because people don't give enough love to Nick. All right, Danny Manning, Ron Harper, Mark Jackson, are all a boat outlaw for those. There's so many players on that team. What's that yeah. like? So, Grant. Yes. Gary Grant, Harold Ellis. Uh, yeah, there's there's way more. Mark Aguirre. Like, this team is, like, anyone who watched basketball in the 90s knows all these guys. How does going in as a rookie and you're, when they make the trade for Dominique Wilkins, I don't know, I, I'd kind of be, like, uh, a little awestruck. Are you like, man, I'm playing with these dudes? Or are you just like, yo, I'm playing ball. It's it's like that level where, hey, we just playing. Or or is there some, damn, I'm playing with Neek. <laughs> it's funny, though, because you don't really see. At that point, Neek was probably his 12th season, right? Yeah, so, yeah. He, he's 34, but. He's yeah, still- but Rooks, Rooks don't get to play with him. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. <laughs> 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 Yo, Dominique, hey, Dominique will come to practice probably with a, a newspaper and some flip flops. You know he's not going to that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I, I tell you, I'll tell you a quick neat story. He he would pretty you know he 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 would never practice pretty well. You know he he was just a veteran. He skilled. He didn't come out. He didn't warm up. You know he would just you know sit by the locker until it was go time. And one game uh, he had we had a game. He played really well. And we we got in the huddle after the game. And the coach goes, Neek, how you doing? He said, I'm doing good, coach. He said, you feeling really? He said, I'm doing great. He said, you had a really good game. He said, yeah. Any, any ailments? He says, no. He said, great. You can practice tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Walk into the trap. No, no. I'm Walk sure he woke. I'm sure he woke up sore. Walked right into it. Walked right See, into it. At least Neek did that at 34. I was doing that mm-hmm. at like 15. Yeah. But I, the one time he did practice, the one day he did practice, we stood while shouldn't practice because 13 for 13 from the floor in that practice <laughs> we was like we don't need one to we don't need you so he's like you know what go ahead sit down we don't, yeah, we, don't, we, don't, we don't need you it's <laughs> interesting it's crazy that you mentioned that too T because when you get to the pros you wanted the better long ball shooters that I've ever seen right so you've had some games in the pros where Things have gone really well for you. I was in the building in Salt Lake City when you put 29 on John Stockton. I was there. 31. I can't. 31. Why you keep 
You took a game away from me. Still low ball him. I know, I know it was thirty-one, but I was gonna say twenty-nine because I knew that. Because I know to you. Come on, I was Jay. In, I, was in the, I was in the building, and I was in the building that night. You put thirty-one on John Stockton. Can you? Talk you, you know you can't take away points. I know how many points I scored in men's league on Friday. You can't tell me he's not gonna remember how much you put on John Stockton. <laughs> T, can you can, can you talk a little can you t- talk a little bit about how was it like going up against guys like Stockton, going up against guys like that? Well, actually, you know, seeing these guys play all your life, it, it was it was a it was an honor actually be on the floor with them to mm-hmm. be recognizing the same uh, fraternity as those guys. I mean, it's really easy to play against people like the John Stockton, the Isaiah, the Joe Dumas, the Jordans, because you know you get up for those type of things, you know. Yeah. Those in, in the NBA, those are really not the guys you really feel worry about because you're always prepared for them. You gotta worry, you gotta worry about the guy who don't have a commercial. You gotta worry <laughs> that don't have a sneaker. That's the guy the guy that comes out of nowhere, right? <laughs> guy that comes out of nowhere. And it's interesting you mentioned that too, T, because I wanted to say that back then you were one of the better long ball shooters. So you think about the game today. How do you think your game would translate into today's game? I think that I think it would actually translate pretty well. I think well my skill set would be probably more prone to today's game than yeah. it is what it was in the nineties because in the nineties, you know, basically it was it was uh we played through the big fellas, you know what yeah. I mean? The nineties had a bunch of seven footers that was really skilled with their back to the basket. Mm-hmm. And what would is back then you would have to dump the ball into the post and spot up and, and figure out if the big man didn't get doubled, if the big man didn't get doubled, you mm-hmm. If the big man didn't get doubled, you know, you know, you get an opportunity or he'd go. But nowadays, it's more or less with the, uh, the guards who who has the ball in their hands, who's bringing it down. They're making all the decisions, mm-hmm. and they're making 30, 35 feet out nowadays. You know what I mean? Right. So, I, mean, I would have loved to play in a um in a system, in a system, in a, <laughs> in a system where I could dribble the ball down the court. I right. could hold. 15 seconds and then shoot the ball. I mean, that would have been heaven for right. a lot of guys back then if we could have did that. But if we'd have did that twice in a row, you're coming we, out. We we hey, we'd have had uh the boss would like to see you. <laughs> okay, can we pause there for a second? Because I keep telling people, I keep telling people I used to get yanked all the time because I even if I made my shots, like I had teammates tell me that's too far, that's too deep, but it would go in. And I'd be like, just let me shoot. And and I yeah. and I get pulled and I sit on the bench and I try to tell, especially the younger guys. Now I'm like, trust me, there were guys like you, like you shot 38% from three. I think your best year was like 44. Like you could shoot from three, but they didn't allow us to just really just go crazy and just shoot at will. They didn't, we didn't have the green light. Very few people, if any. So like I know when you're on Sacramento, I don't know if your paths cross with like one of my favorite players, uh Mahmoud El Dubarouf, right? He could hit the three. You had guys like that. Tell them again that they just wouldn't allow you to go through the big man and take your shots when my mood, went needed. My mood was my one of my better friends on the team. We actually had side by side lockers. We'll go to practice an hour early. We would shoot. We will. Uh, we will actually track our shots throughout the whole practice. You know, every single sh- every ball that left our hand, we we had counted for. And he was one of the best shooters that I ever witnessed. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it was amazing because he's not really a big guy. He's not, he's not like strong, but he shoots the ball really effortless from deep. And I was, you know, I'm shooting with the guy. You know, chill. You know, I don't give anybody credit if they can't. No, shoot. Terry I'm doesn't. Know. This guy, I was getting tired, and he was just comfortably kept shooting in rhythm and rhythm, time and time again, and with perfection. And <clears throat> I seen him sometimes going games where he, we would just get, we didn't even have a play. We would just give him the ball on the left side and let him decide what he wanted to do. And sometimes he would run off 20, 20 points just like that in a row. Mm-hmm. If he played in today's game where basically the, the center is 6'8 today, you know, back then. <laughs> if, you, <laughs> back, <laughs> we, got eight, we got six, seven centers running around today. Imagine if Jordan played and Jordan had a six, seven guy back there opposed to a seven, one guy. What would have happened then? Right. Yeah. You know, not to mention, a, 
not to mention T to add to what you just got finished saying, just in transition, because you was a, you were another guy who was really good in transition with the stop and pop, with shooting the long ball. So to think about your game today with playing with Steph Curry or playing with Klay Thompson or playing with a guy like that, where the game is so wide open, how much different it would be for you? It's, it's just, I think it's unfair just to play. If you was, if I was having to play with those two guys and, and I'm the third option, that means that I have to be open. <laughs> 50 60 percent from the floor with <laughs> you i don't even i don't even think you need to you could just take that team because you had mitch richmond abdul roof like we said abdul roof like we said yourself and then you had otis thorpe down low so if you missed like you 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 no. your team if you could have put them in a time machine you would have loved playing with with those guys that, you would have had a lot of open shots we, we 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 tried it we tried it then but uh we had a uh we had a uh it was myself mitch richmond and my i think we were pretty three of the pretty good shooters on one team. Yeah. But at the time, we I think our coordinator we didn't have a good coordinator. We were running a uh, at the time we were running a Princeton offense where we're we're making backdoor cuts opposed to no getting no. Oh, no. no yeah so we, <laughs> that had, was going Pete, on. Pete Carrell was the uh, was the assistant there in Sacramento at the time, mm -hmm. and that's when he was trying to implement the uh, the backdoor cuts. And it's kind of it's kind of tough making backdoor cuts in the West when you got Matumbo in them up back there. Right. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna do that. I got Matumbo protecting the rim, right? I got Malone. So no, let box. me do a backdoor cut and kill myself right. in the pit. Yeah, no right. thanks. Oh man, so that, that, that's a uh, that that's real interesting. But, uh, let me tell you a quick story. We went down yeah. to we went down to, and. Uh, it was some chuckle about, you know, uh, they, people didn't really like the offense that we were running. Mm -hmm. So the, was the coach at the time, I forget his name, he goes, you know what? Tonight we're going to throw the we're gonna throw the offense out the uh, window. We're going to – you guys ever played street ball? Mm -mm. He said, you guys ever played street ball? Yeah. He said, you know, you pick a team and you, and you just feel it out as you go. You got to run anything. Just keep the floor balanced. Just play. And we beat Orlando by ten in Orlando. <laughs> oh, what? That, see, that had to be music to your ears to hear the coach say that. The that coach, had to be. We not running anything. Do whatever you want. Just what? We were looking at each other like what? <laughs> that but, has to be music to your ears, no doubt. But the craziest thing, but of course, my mood, He got he got the early hot hand on that one. Yeah. So he, he went bananas. It was whoever uh, whoever get hot first could take it, but yeah. he got hot early and often, so we just referred to him. Now, real quick, T, I also want to add that not only did you play in the NBA, because this also translates, because you also played in the Euro League too, and you played in Berlin. So what was the difference between playing in the NBA and playing in the Euro League at the time? Can I just add to that question real quick? Because yep. we've heard a lot of guys like Giannis, Jokic, Luka saying it's actually harder to score over in Europe, and it's not that they're more talented. They're not just the way that they play. It's it's tougher. Mm -hmm. Did you find that too? Yeah, it's a little tougher, I could say, because you don't have the uh, the NBA rules for the zones and stuff like that back then. Because in Europe, it's almost like a college a college situation, that, and it's grown men. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. they want to play a boxing one, diamond and two, gadget defense and stuff like that. Gear it towards you. It's easy to control somebody in that setting. Opposed yep. to the A setting where you know the court is more open, you could ISO, people got to get out, or if mm -hmm. they too far in, it's illegal defense. So what he says, and it's more brutal out there because you know you could get you could get fouled really hard, and, you know, no blood, they keep it pushing. Keep you it know, what I'm <laughs> way more physical. Yeah. Way wow. more physical over there, sure, T. Yeah. And T, the, la the, the, the last thing that I want to ask you, considering your, your entire pro career, your college career, how awesome you were. T, where do you see the game? How do you feel about the game today? I feel I definitely feel the game has totally changed. It yeah. did a, it, it definitely pivoted. It's a lot of scoring. Uh, I guess for the fans, it might be more exciting. Yeah. But for somebody like me, back in the nineties, uh, we we take pride in like stopping people. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's kind of hard sometimes to watch these guys just like, it seemed like they're almost playing cousin basketball. I'll let you score, you score hey, this time. You know, it's like back and forth. I don't see anybody really getting after, pushing, you know, holding people accountable. I, 
Maybe I don't know, but it's just, it's just like back then, if someone hit four or five threes in a row, you don't give them a six and a seven try. No, T. What? 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 T. What is this? What is this best two way player? What does that mean to D? What does that mean today? I don't even know what that means. A two way player, like player. That's what I thought. That's that's what I thought. I thought that was somebody that played both basketball and baseball or something like that. I'm like, yo, when we was coming up, a two way player was the dude who played on both sides of the basketball, and it was customary. That wasn't no, no. a two a two way player was just a player because we yeah, all everybody we all that's why I didn't get a lot of minutes because I only played one way. My philosophy was my philosophy was the team that scores the most points wins 100 percent of the game. So I'm gonna be that dude. <laughs> oh, but everybody man. else, right? Two way was just everybody. You have to play. Real. Yeah, real. Taking charges. Nick oh, taking charges. Yeah. Well, Terry, I, I want to ask you. So I know you played a, a good chunk of your career on the Clippers. Mm -hmm. um, are you still a fan of a specific team or are you kind of are your sights still set on the Clippers? And if so, how do you feel about them heading into next season, having Kawhi, PG, you know, kind of the whole crew back? How do you feel about them? Oh, I think those guys, are they're very talented, but sometimes <clears throat> it's just a matter of managing all that talent. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Second order of talent of who's going to get the shots and when, who's going to defer to who. Uh, mm -hmm. I think one of the major problems when you have a lot of talent, sometimes you could have too much talent. You know what I mean? Uh, when you have like two or three guys and everyone else on the team knows that these two, three guys, they're going to do what they need to do. We got to mm -hmm. feel it. Sometimes that's a better goal. You got four or five guys thinking it's my turn. Right. You know? So that that could cause the there, but. Um, Right now, I mean, I really, I've been watching LeBron, you know, okay. you know I've been a, a, a big LeBron fan. I like how he, how he go about his business. I like how he does it. Uh, uh, KD is definitely one of my favorites. Kyrie is must, must see TV. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's a couple of other guys I watch, but, uh, oh, well, I definitely like Luca. Luca, oh, def yeah. yeah, he's definitely different out oh. there. I mean, he is. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I, when he got drafted, I didn't know too much about him. And I was trying to figure out how could they pick this guy ahead of Marvin Bagley. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. I was going, because I couldn't understand. I seen him back twice and uh, I seen him play in the EYBL mm -hmm. and the team was like one in 10. They were playing the number one team in the EYBL. They were stacked. He went for like 38, 26 and 12 playing yeah. a and I'm like, who is this guy? He was only in the, like 11th grade, and he reclassed up to go to Duke, right? He still had a year. Reclassed up, demolished the freshman, and I didn't see it. But now I understand. Well, scouts pretty much know what they're doing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They, they, they clearly know what they're doing. They, they do. Know. They clearly know what they're doing. So, no doubt about it. All right, we got we got a question from the chat. So I want to give 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 a couple because we have a couple and, and and there's some of our usual suspects. So I'm gonna ask the first question from FIFA Boy. Um, what is your fate? I know this is gonna be hard, but what is your favorite basketball moment? It could be something you were involved with, something you saw, it doesn't matter. Just your favorite basketball moment, other than probably beating Chillin' one on one, who's still scared to come play me every Friday. I, I actually attack his lives and I tell him to come out and play, no and come play with me. <laughs> Was a phenomenal one -on -one. He tells me he was great, but I don't know. He won't play me anymore. Talk, talk, play me talk to him, T. Hold we on. need to see this. Let's go. Talk, talk to him, T. Tell, tell him about your I, man one-on-one. -on -one. I'm gonna give you this. I'm gonna give. I'm gonna give you chill right now, so you can understand. Because you probably understand. Because I was there. Okay. He was like. <laughs> I would tell you he was like. He was. Uh, I would give you. Oh, not exactly that. Like a Harold Miner, uh, MJ, back to the basket, fade away. That's his game. That was him. And yeah, this baby Jordan, Harold Miner, baby Jordan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. It was like, and, and Jay and Chill would definitely dunk on you for sure. He would and, definitely. And just so you guys, and just so you guys know, when I when y'all when y'all see the the footage of me, like when I was in junior college, wearing number twenty four, the reason why I wore twenty four is because of this dude we talking to right now. He's my hero. Really? This is my man. Oh, this is my oh, man. Oh, that's why you wore twenty four. Oh, yeah, oh, that's good to know. That's good to know. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Let's, yeah. let's get back to the question. Let's stop giving yeah. Jay so much love. He gets enough yeah, love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah this is okay, my dude, best, right? and best NBA moment. Best NBA moment. I would, uh, man, NBA moment. 
a lot of great NBA moments off the court. Because you looking for one on the court. Right? Oh no, it could be it could be off the court too. <laughs> <laughs> but don't get anybody in too much trouble. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, we can't do that. Yeah. Um, NBA moment. I think. Um, damn, a moment. There's so many of them. Damn. Well, one one moment was um, it's just funny. Uh, you mentioned the Mark McGuire. Um, he was a big, uh, he was a big Dallas Cowboy fan, right? And uh, we, it was a sun. Dallas Cowboys was playing on a Sunday one o'clock game, and it was uh, it was uh, Saturday night after the game. Uh, coach said we're gonna have practice tomorrow Sunday at twelve o'clock. So Mark said we can't do that, Coach, because the Cowboys play tomorrow at one o'clock. <laughs> My D boys play the ball at one o'clock, coach. We can't do this. Coach said practice at twelve. Mark said if practice. Mark said two things gonna happen. It's either <clears throat> we're not gonna have practice, or I'm retiring because I gotta watch the D boys play. <laughs> that's a fan. That's a fan of the Cowboys. <laughs> yeah. This is to be good. That's serious. I went to practice at ten o'clock. Mark didn't show up. I'm like, nah, 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 I ain't sure. Two hours go by, no bar. I go to Aunt Kim, a restaurant, back porch in Marina Del Rey after practice. Mark is there with his family. I say, Mark, <laughs> hey, what, what are you doing? He said, you didn't hear, I retired. <laughs> 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 I never seen Mark since. That was the last time you seen him. And that's the last time you seen him. He really retired. He's throwing the towel. He really retired. Yes, he never came back. That was it. I'm telling you a true story. Ask Mark McGuire himself. That was his last day. He didn't come to practice. If 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 they wouldn't have stepped practice during the Cowboy game, (laughs) he probably played a couple more days. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. That's yeah. loyalty. Yeah. I'll, tell you, I'll tell you right now. And how the to... Cowboys do that season? That's what I want to know. Did they let him down? Oh, it was the 90s. No, they probably were pretty They went good. to the ball game that year. Yeah. yeah. Well, they did. Yeah, they were good back right. then. Yeah. They went to the ball game that year. Damn. Yeah, oh, good. I don't know, T. I, 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 like to, I like to think that that 40-point game in Japan in the preseason was pretty awesome. I don't no, know. no, no. No, that's a joke. That was a joke. What happened was... <laughs> Sorry, we was uh, we were playing in Japan, and uh, yep. yeah, I had, I had a uh, I had a really good game. So we're playing. Uh, I think we're playing Portland next, and we're playing against Clyde Drexler. Mm-hmm. I'm, you know, I'm running around getting buckets. So we in the scouting report in the morning. The coach said we're going to double down when Clyde get in the post against the hair. So I said, Why are we doing that? <laughs> <laughs> The whole building got silent. Everybody, the coach looked and said, what do you mean? You going to stay down there by yourself? I said, yeah, let me see what I can do. Uh-oh. So now the coach told everybody, when he got him down there, we're going to lay down. Let him handle it, right? I don't know what Clyde about. I'm thinking, you know, I don't really know. <laughs> this don't sound good at all. I don't not, like it. I don't it's like not going to end well. well. I don't like it <laughs> at all. <laughs> We go into the game now, right? This, I'm going to tell you, it's like the first quarter. I got, uh, after the first quarter of this game, I got I got 12 points. Clyde has like four. Mm-hmm. I got 12, Clyde got four. I go to the bench, and I'm woofing. I'm talking crazy. I'm telling the coach. I'm telling the players. I told y'all in, in the shoot around, let me go. I got them. Don't help. Nothing. Okay. No, oh boy. Bye. Final box score, final box score, Clyde 44, <laughs> the 12. Oh. <laughs> I ain't get the game. He went for 44. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Yeah. Oh, hey, that's, that's Be careful like, what you wish for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Little you, humility moment. <laughs> because that league is so, the league is so, the players are so good. Like mm-hmm. they could step it and get it going at any time. It only takes like one or two shots and they off and running. The yeah. key is don't let them get it off. Mm-hmm. If you don't let them get it off and somebody gets comfortable, they're pros. There's nothing you could do once a guy gets comfortable. 
Yeah. It's nothing. Right. I want to say, we, the, the, you remember Malik Philly? God bless his, bless his soul. Yeah. All right. And we, we was really good friends. We hung out together. We did a lot of stuff together, business and everything. And we had a game. We we're playing the Chicago Bulls and we we're in uh, LA. Did you give them vinegar today? Okay. We're, in LA. we're in LA and um, we're playing uh, Michael Jordan. And, you know, we're two guards. Malik play him a little bit. Then I play Mike a little bit. So at the time, uh, it was halftime. And, you know, we had, I think Chicago was up by like two at halftime. Mike had like seven or eight points at halftime. So, you know, <clears throat> all the guards in the locker room were starting, you know, we talking, we high-fiving each other, like, yeah, you know, you know, we got him, we got him. We gonna we gonna hold him under his average, you know. Everybody doing a good job. Just hold, just hold, hold the fort, right? So <clears throat> I come out in the third quarter with like maybe three minutes left. Malik comes in the game and he's playing Mike. Mike ain't take a shot yet in the third quarter. He ain't take one shot. Malik start playing him at this point. Mike runs off about five straight buckets. And one, he falls into the stands, all kinds of stuff going crazy. Then the coach says, Terry, get Malik. I was like, ain't no need to get Malik now. Let's go. <laughs> By the way, Tone, I was at that game. Jordan finished with 40 that night. Just so yeah. you know. Of course he did. That's typical. Yeah. Like that's what. <laughs> it's just yeah. ridiculous how he did. You know what is crazy? It's how he could just turn it. Like a lot of people don't know Mike and never been around, never seen him play. You know, within that era. And I hear a lot of people like they compare a lot of people to him. People say they could beat him one on one. They really have no idea how good who that guy really was. Yeah. Not a clue. Trust me. Yeah. When how many stories? How many stories do you need of like that or like Reggie Miller t says one about in the preseason where you ain't nothing, Mac. You ain't nothing, Mike. I got you, Mike. And then he goes off for forty in the second half. Like how many times do superstar players have to tell you he could just turn it on and you're done? Like yeah. before people start believing this stuff. Because what happens is it's crazy because the, the Chicago Bulls was actually designed around Mike, of course, but it was like. Scotty Pippen wasn't out there trying to like go hard. He was really trying to get the ball to Mike. Mm -hmm. Everyone's trying to get it to him. You know, like they'll wait for him to come into his position to give it to him. Right. And then everyone, and they'll play out like Mike was a seven footer and everyone will, you know, double team. He kicking out or he do whatever he want, <clears throat> but he would destroy this game. This to, to today's game. If Michael Jordan stood up in this, in this thing where he has to go against six, eight centers, like, it will be, it'll be like he was playing a foot above the rim. Easily a foot above the rim. So it's no way no one here after, and he's going to get by the guy in front of him. Mike is getting by that guy. So who's going to cover him when he gets by that guy, a 6'7", six, a 6'8", six, a, it ain't going to happen. Yeah. He's the average 50 <laughs> in this game. In, in this in this era, he averaged 50. Yeah. So would you say Mike is the greatest you've ever seen? Yep. And... <laughs> Ho 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 ho! Thank you, Terry. Thank you, Terry. Oh no, <laughs> we're good right if, there. If I'm not, if, if I'm not mistaken, is this the same dude who did not, Terry? Who did you tell me the best player ever was? Now, here we go. Here, here we go. Wait, 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 here we wait, go. Wait. Here we go. The debate, the debate. We have these debates all the time. You you talk about LeBron. Here, here we go. Here, here we yeah, go. That's that's, that's, yeah. that's your boy. That's your boy's chill. That's his. That's his yeah. man, LeBron. That's my guy. LeBron's my guy, but it's two different people here, right? You got to understand, it's two different people. Michael Jordan was not a facilitator. He facilitated because he wanted to. Mike was a killer. Understand. He's not giving you the ball in the last minute. He's not deferring. He's not jumping in the air 10 feet in, throwing it back out for a three-point shot. He's not doing that. LeBron is going to the rim to give it to someone else. Right. And if it's not happening, then he'll take it. But Mike is not in that mindset. So it's two different mindsets. So you can't compare. It, there's not a comparison. You know what I mean? Because if you threw the ball to Mike on the wing or you threw it to LeBron on the wing, what are you going to do? Mike is a bucket. It ain't no if ands or buts about it's a bucket. <laughs> and we and we had and just so y'all know, thanks, me thanks and this, for bringing him on. I appreciate this. Here's, here's the thing: me and this, this me and this dude, we've been doing this for years. I just want you guys to me and this dude, we go back and forth with this 
four years. And he played against Michael Jordan, right? So he knows how good Jordan really is. I only sat there and saw him. In, whether I was in the arena or whether I was on TV. I only I never played against him. So he knows how good he is. But with that also being said, what else does James have to do in terms of clutch performances to push you over the top? Because you're the same dude that was telling me, J-Dub, this dude is this. He, I'm confused, he, man. Oh, no, no. Yes. he He's all those things. Yes. Okay. Okay. Both, both things can be true. Okay. Both things can okay. be true. That's what saying is, when you playing against these guys, I'm gonna right. tell you something, and, and you could ask somebody else this too. Then they might share this with you. The difference between a good player and a great player mm-hmm. is energy. It's the energy, mm-hmm. and you feel certain energies differently when you play certain players than when you play other players. Mm-hmm. The great ones, they got an energy about them that's different than the other guy. You can mm-hmm. feel it. They go by you. It's just like it's different. It's like, you know, driving a, a, a Ferrari, you know, it's effortless. You know what I mean? You feel that. That's when you know it's special. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, I'm going to give you a couple of rapid fire questions from the chat if you have some time. Go ahead. Yeah? Okay. Toughest player or the or the player that you hated playing against? Mitch Rich. Is there a why or just because he's damn no, good? No, he, he, he was good. He was damn good, but he was strong. Mm. You know, 6'5", 220, really strong, and he could really shoot it. So he did like, and, and he didn't dribble much. He just knew how to create space with strength, and yep. he had a he touch. So it was he was a tough cover. He was a tough guy to play. And you can uh-huh. never really shut him down you could never really shut him down you could yeah just, i think he's under I, I think he's so yeah. underrated how good mitch he, was he, yeah he was he was a tough cover because he could have two points going into the fourth quarter you could just book him for 24 25 it didn't matter he's gonna finish with that um prettiest shot who who had the prettiest shot you've ever seen in 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 in, the, in history that's a big question but ah, you can true. narrow that down but do you know um um, Allen Houston, Allen Alan Houston. Houston, Allen Houston had a really pretty shot, and this uh, and people might not remember Wesley Person. Yeah, uh, Chuck Person's younger brother, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, he had a really nice. He had a pretty shot too. Those are the <clears throat> those are the two that I think is uh, oh, Peja Stojakovic. Oh yeah, you played with him on the Kings, right? Yeah, Peja had a, a, a nice stroke too. Yeah. Like, him, you see him shoot, you'd think it was like uh, they edit the tape. Like he goes two hours and when he's shot, you think like <laughs> they they said that they called us in a room one day. We got this prospect we're looking at. You know, he's in shooting drill. They, they put the tape up and for the team to watch this guy, and it was like it was lights out. Now, this guy didn't miss nothing for like an hour. Just. And then they end up. I don't know how they end up getting them, but it was it was a beautiful thing. But he, and, oh, I forgot Mahmoud Abdul Rauf. Yeah, you, are you kidding me? Yeah, yeah. I was actually surprised that wasn't one of the first ones. Yeah, he, like, he, was I, he was so close to me because he's right next to me. I was thinking, of me, but yeah, right. that that guy. Um. Okay. I guess we got some people who have uh plans on on making it to the league so advice to someone who's trying to make it to the league what's something they have to do if they're going to make it i think that i would say you know everyone knows the odds you know you got a chance of becoming probably governor of your state or president of the united states and becoming an nba player but to say that is to, let's just say you want to become an nba player and, you, and, and you're committed to this and you have to be committed to it this is something that you have to do or you have to be a part of every day of your life for at least three hours, at least minimum three hours, whether it's rain, sleet, snow outside. Uh, what we would do, we would pretty much uh, give you a, 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 a day. Uh, we will wake up probably five o'clock in the morning. We'll probably run two and a half to three miles to start our day. We would shoot 500 to 1,000 shots. Then we'll play pickup or we would consider an open gym for like an hour and a half, two hours. Then we'll go back at four to six, four to run. We'll go back again with something we call the nightcap from like 11 to like 2 a.m. in the morning. 
So that was like a normal day. <laughs> so if oh. if you're planning on thinking it's just not like a hobby or anything like this, you have to be fully all the way in. You know, uh, a lot of people uh, don't understand the work that it takes uh, to, to maintain and stay at that level. You know, you could work hard for three, four years. You make it to the NBA as a rookie. But that same work ethic has to continue. You know what I mean? It has to continue in order for you to stay there because there's going to be somebody better, quicker, stronger, uh, faster that's coming up next, you know? So you just got to uh, wait your time and, and hopefully you stay disciplined and committed to it. Uh, but I think it's possible because I can tell you, if I made it to the NBA, it's very possible for anybody to make. Uh, I, I heard you had a pretty good. I heard you had a pretty good work ethic. Just to give you a quick, just to give you a quick synopsis tone. I was going into my junior year at Utah State. The first year I was playing a uh, Division One basketball, and me and Terry would work out all the time in the summertime. And he hit me, yo, J Dub, let's go get some shots up. And I'm thinking it's seven o'clock in the morning. I'm like, all right, I'm up. Where you want me to meet you at? He like, I'm downstairs right now. <laughs> So I got so I gotta get ready right now. Like I just got up at seven o'clock. I just got up. He like, no, I'm downstairs right now waiting on you. And oh my, I gotta get ready right now. Yeah. I gotta go right now. Listen, I tell I tell the kids I coach, because you know, everybody wants to be the NBA. I tell the kids I coach, the likelihood of making the NBA, this you have the same odds as getting <laughs> struck by lightning twice. You gotta work hard because yeah. <laughs> struck by lightning twice. Yeah. So, so good it. for you. You were struck by lightning twice. Um, the next one is oh, best locker room personality. I like that. So who who's who's cracking jokes? Who was who's killing <laughs> you? That's a great question. Room? You know who's great? Uh olden polities. Olden polities is funny. Uh, Spencer. Remember Elmore Spencer? Mm -hmm. Mark Jackson was a, a, a funny guy, too. He's pretty funny. Mark's, mm -hmm. Mark's a really good guy. Um, Danny Manning was a, a, a prankster, jokester too. Really? Yeah, you don't that's think not what I would have. I would have. I would have thought of. Yeah, Danny's funny. He plays a lot. Of, he plays a lot of games. He plays a lot of games. Especially uh, this is the last one. This is the last one for me, and then I'll let you go, Haley, because this is from the chat. I just. Oh no, I was just gonna read it. Yeah. Oh, were you gonna read? I don't know if it was the same one. So okay, you are back in your in your prime at your best. Mm -hmm. You're a free agent. What team would you, in today's NBA, would you like to play for? It could be because of the play, the teammates. It could be because of the style of play. Anything. Hmm, that's a good question. I would, I would probably want to, but it's, it's the obvious to say Golden State. I don't. I will probably want to play. That's actually my answer too, because you know I get some shots up, right? So you, know, you want some shots over there. That's the thing. You know, you got guys like if you shot, if you shot four threes. In the nineties, you put up some threes. Mm -hmm. They shoot threes in a quarter. So <laughs> yeah. You you gonna get you gonna get them at some point. You know what I mean? You gonna yeah. get but I wouldn't mind I wouldn't mind playing with Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. I think Milwaukee uh will be a good team. Why? Because you have a big like Giannis that could put it on the floor and cause problems. So if you got a big that has so that um the man so much and you have to collapse on them. I mean, they shoot his job much easier. We won't even have to put it on the floor. We just have to catch and shoot. So that, I mean, that'll add another three, four years to your career that you don't have to fight and put the ball on the floor a hundred times just to get to the hole. Just stand there and wait for Giannis to bring everybody to him. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, that's who Jay and I have going into the, both Jay and I have going into the finals next season. So yeah. both, Oh, great, for real? great teams. Yeah, we both have them. I yeah, I think you do, Jay. Right? Well, what am I? I think we all picked them. What am I? Chocolate? Oh, I, I thought you had the Lakers. I thought you had the, the Lakers, Lakers are in the West. The oh, you're yeah. talking about Golden State? I, said I thought you were talking and, about the Bucks. Yeah. Oh, Dubs, yeah, yeah no, Dubs ain't going back. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Uh oh, go ahead, Terry. No, go ahead. Oh, do we have you for a little bit longer? Are you uh would you want to stick around for the goat of every NBA team, or do you have to rush? <laughs> well, I, well, I, well, I have some uh, kids in there right now that's been banging on this door. No doubt. <laughs> hey, hey, T, it was good to see you, man. I appreciate yeah. it. I, I really appreciate you coming through. Um, like I said, guys, this is my man. Uh, I grew up on him. He's one of my heroes, and I was. I'm glad that you came on, T. I really appreciate you, brother. Man. No 
appreciate the love. I thank you guys for having me soon. Ace Book, love it. <laughs> hey, no the, doubt. Yeah, the craziest thing about this, if you remember this, Chill, I told you about 10 years ago. <laughs> you did say that. Yes, you did. You did say because we, we, we do this anyway. This is yeah. what we, we do. We see this. He did. Should have been doing it. And he was like, yeah. oh, I know. and look at it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah, we did. Thank this you. is what. All right, man. It was, it, was, it, was, it, was it was nice. Honored. It was nice. It was nice meeting you. You have an open yeah. invitation. Come back anytime. Um, of course, because you agree with me about Jordan. So you're you're, you're welcome <laughs> back anytime. <laughs> yeah, it was an honor Mom. meeting you, Terry. Thank you. Well, take care. Appreciate you. Thanks, Chill. I'll talk to you too. I'll talk to you soon, T. No doubt. Love, right, brother. Out. All right. Bye. Oh, oh that's. That he was one, great. one, that's a great dude right there, Jade. Two, yeah. Haley, stop banging your mic. Oh, was I? The you point, 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 point. Oh, I'm sorry. Jeez. <laughs> nah, that's my man, yo. Um, I'm glad we was able to get him on. That's 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 super. Yeah, that dope. was all, that that was that was that was good. That was that was, yeah, that was super dope. Yeah. Yeah. He's there's there's a bunch guy. of clips. There's a bunch of TikTok clips. Oh right yeah. There. Mm -hmm. Well, it's super just so dope. interesting hearing from his perspective. I, I think one of the most interesting things, most uh, I don't know, kind of it made me rethink a lot of things was when he what he said about Jordan because mm -hmm. I didn't get to see Jordan play. I could watch all the highlights in the world that I want, but. I like he said that energy that you could just feel probably even being in the same building as him not just being a player on the court oh man I just I wish I could if I could go back in time it would be to he was awesome Haley I, I will tell you he was he was I because I, because of, of Terry I saw him I saw Jordan play a couple times and mm -hmm. every time I went to see him he was all oh, he was awesome no doubt about mm -hmm. it he, he was absolutely yeah. awesome so it's yeah. you know it's not just the energy thing's interesting because it's not I don't want to say it's not just superstar players, but I, and and hear me out, like what I mean. Like I've been fortunate, like Jay. Like I've seen, if I go backwards, right? I've I've yeah. been in the building with LeBron uh, and Vince Carter, and 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 I brought up Vince Carter for a reason because I'll get to it in a second. And mm -hmm. Kobe and Mike, and I've been right. I've got to see them all play live. Vince, it's very interesting. The reason I put his name in there is, I, you felt the same kind of excitement when he was playing. Like he's not look. I'm not knocking Vince, like, but he's not on that Jordan, Kobe, LeBron level. But it was the same type of thing. You could feel yeah. like this was gonna be yeah. this was, yeah, this would be entertaining. It's just it's it's yeah. it's, it's it's special. It's really it's, plus being up there in Toronto too with that energy. Up yeah, there. that's the thing. Like he he brought a whole country into yeah. basketball. So yeah, yeah it was, it was it was different. Was, no doubt about that. It was definitely different. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. Um, real quick update on the game. Uh, somebody said Tua was injured. Tua, yeah, Tua, 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 so, Tua, Tua me is. Is Tua is out? Uh, looks like another concussion. He's at the University oh. of Cincinnati. Um, we're hoping that it wasn't. Listen, everybody said they were lying about last week. Uh, let's hope it wasn't a concussion that they covered up, and now he has another one. Um, so, so yeah, we'll. Uh, Tone, you and me had this conversation. What was my issue with Tua? It was not his ability. It was not. His stay effort. healthy. Yeah. Made a glass. That was all I cared about with him. Everything else, I was. Everything else, he checked the box. I was good with Tua. Everything yeah. else he checked the box. Yeah, well, yeah. Our our, our <sighs> thoughts are with Tua. Hopefully, hopefully he he uh, hopefully he's okay. Um, yeah. yeah. Listen, I said this, and and it wasn't to be a jerk, but when he got hit yesterday or last week, whether it was his back, his ankle, a concussion, mm -hmm. I said, just listen. You have aspirations now. You're three and zero. He looks really good. You've built a team. Mm -hmm. It's okay to let him sit out a week. Let him be healthy. I know Cincinnati. It's a Thursday night. Quick turnaround too. Yeah, the, you got to look at the 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 bigger picture sometimes. And I know he was probably saying, "No, I'm good. Let me play. Let me play." I just I feel like in today's day and age, man, you need to 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 proceed with caution. And 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 again, hopefully it's nothing serious and he comes back. Got to be safe from yourself, yeah. man. You yeah. have to be. Especially especially when they have such a good thing going. Like who cares? Oh, screw a four and zero record if you lose your quarterback. It would have right. been better to you right. know. Like you said, Bruin, how you look at the bigger picture, and but you never know. You know those calls are hard to make. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, hoping for his quick recovery. Um, oh, real quick, I I was Keyshawn asked this in the chat, but uh, I know we have to jump into the goat of every team. Mm -hmm. um, but Lonzo out for the whole season. Thoughts on him and the Bulls? Jay, had you heard that? And were yeah. you surprised? I was. How do you yeah, I, I, I was surprised to hear that. Um, 
the Bulls were decimated last season by injury. Uh, like I said before, DeMar DeRozan was holding them together with glue and tape, and they still were at the top of the Eastern Conference. And then the fact that they fell apart because he wasn't able to hold them together that long. Now they actually are healthy for the most part, but that team going as far as they could possibly go was predicated on Lonzo being healthy. I got, I, I've told this, I've said this to Tone. The reason why Minnesota ended up making it to the playoffs last year is because D'Angelo Russell was healthy and he was a catalyst for what they were doing. Well, that's the same logic with Lonzo. If Lonzo, this is their this is their floor leader that they need. And if he's healthy, he gives them a different dynamic defensively. He gives them a different dynamic as a long ball shooter. He gives them a different dynamic as a as a distributor. And if he's not healthy, that makes that that means that they got to switch up their entire style. And I think they're going to struggle because of that. Listen, I, I, I don't want to be right because of an injury, but I told you the Bulls just I, – I thought they were going to take a downturn this year and they were going to be like in the play-in. Uh, something like this will, will unfortunately help, you know, facilitate um, that happening. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I do – I think there's – is there any other questions we need to get to before you want to jump into the GOAT or you want to jump into the GOAT of every team? Okay. Yeah, let's, let's go for it. All right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do we have any kind of graphic or should I, shall I just read off the various teams? Uh, you know we'll what? From- why don't, why don't I try to do a makeshift graphic <laughs> and you, um, you, you read off the teams while I Start off. We go, we, this is what happened. We go live. Um, and I'll see what, I'll see if I can figure this I'll out. Win. Okay. Yeah. Let's start off with Atlanta, the Atlanta Hawks. Uh, shall I, I'm going to give you the, shall I give you the person that this graphic says or do you want to give your guys a yeah, yeah, yeah. First? yeah give yeah tell us who, who the graphic says and then we'll right or no yeah yeah wait a minute we, well, b- before we move into this we got to get to the bottom of is it the atlanta hawks or is it the hawks organization oh oh because remember what we're talking about here tone I mean, Gary Payton did not play for the Oklahoma City Thunder. He played for the Seattle Supersonics. Oh, Supersonics, yeah. so there, you're right. We have to get as far as, like, teams go. That's what I'm talking about. Names. Right. Okay. Are, are like you suggesting? Are, are you they suggesting skip those? Someone... No, I think OKC Supersonics is one. Okay. Um, the Hornets are the – oh, geez. Yeah, good point. Yeah. See? Uh, you know what? Just Hawks organization. Let's let's do okay. Hawks organization. Okay. So the name that we were given for the Hawks organization was Dominique Wilkins, one of our favorites on this show. Mm-hmm. Jay, how you feel about that? Y'all gonna kill me for this, but I might have to go with Bob Pettit. And Bob only Pettit. Why, when I think about Bob Pettit, Tone only player to beat Bill Russell. That's number one. He had a six-year stretch where he went twenty-eight and sixteen, won the league MVP Sheesh. twice. He ain't win it once, Tone. He won it twice. And, and he won wasn't, it wasn't he the first ever MVP? In back-to-back seasons, he won it. As a matter of fact, uh. in back-to-back seasons, he won it. As a matter of fact, so so when I think about the he, he was a St. Louis Hawk. He did play for the Hawks. Now, when you talk about the Atlanta Hawks, that's neat. No question about it. When you talk about when you talk about the when you talk about the Atlanta Hawks, no question about it, that's neat, no doubt about that. But when I think about the Hawks as an organization, I'm thinking about Bob Pettit. That's interesting. I mean, uh, Sebastian said uh, Pettit got one ring. How many does Dominique have? Well, none. Um, so I mean, not that that matters, but I'm just adding that to his right. resume. No, I, I see what you're uh, saying, so. but I'm like, if I'm picking a team, who am I picking? I'm picking Dominique Wilkins, so I'm no. I'm, I'm going to stick with Neek. So so- okay, who you got, Haley? I guess there we go. Ah, uh, well, I don't know. I don't really know either, honestly, well enough, nor their resumes. Uh, but I, I mean, she's taking yeah. Trey Young. <laughs> I'll take Trey Young. Thank Trae you, Young, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All so, right. I mean, I'll be honest with that one. I, I have no idea, but mm-hmm. I'm just saying. When before we get into these, if we're saying choosing a goat, it's not mm-hmm. who you would want to take. It's well, isn't it their resume? Isn't that what we're looking at? And we also got to well remember too, And we also got to remember too, Haley. We're not talking about these dudes as overall players. We're talking about these guys as players for that organization. 
That's yeah. who we saw. Oh, yes. That's yes. another yes. thing. We had, right. Cause, cause so, again, Chamberlain was better than Kobe Bryant. James right. is better than Kobe Bryant. Those guys oh. are not better Lakers than Kobe Bryant was. Right, 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 right. 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 Their time is, yes, okay. It's tough. It's honestly tough. All right, let's move on to the Celtics. Yeah. Bill Russell. Uh, that that's probably all in agreement. I'm cool with that. Yeah. No. I'm cool with that. No. Yep. No. <laughs> no. Oh, no. No. Of course not. Because he just said, he just said, um, oh, James is better that. than Kobe. Um, uh, Wilt is better than Kobe. I disagree with that one. And but, but Kobe's the better Laker. Well, Bird is better than Russell. Right. He is a better player, but was Russell a better was Russell a better Celtic? That's the question. When I think they about both, Russell, they both only played for the Celtics. Right. The only difference mm-hmm. is that Bird's a better player. Right. The Celtics team that mm-hmm. Russell was on won more chips. Wait a minute though, Tom. Bill Russell had a four year stretch where he went twenty and twenty five in the playoffs. Chamberlain, the only other guy who could say he did that. Won the league MVP with the Celtics five times. Do you have Do you have Russell over LeBron? Do I have Russell as over as an LeBron? NBA player? Do you have Russell I, over LeBron? I, I do not. But, but, but LeBron Russell, but Russell uh, has eleven chips and went to twelve finals. But he didn't play for the Celtics, though. That's the difference. Well, LeBron he played in the NBA, play, so LeBron I, I mean, did not play the same, for the Celtics. That's you don't the use the same. Thing. No, that's not the same. In thing. your top ten list, in your top ten list, who do you have first, Bird or, or Russell? I got Russell. Oh, you have Russell? Oh, okay. Yeah, he's the only one that I think does. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm going to stick with Bird. Okay. That's yeah. that's tough. All right. Uh, Brooklyn Nets. Julius Irving. Doctor? Uh, as a net. Because that's kind of ABA, right? It is, yeah, Tom. Exactly. It's a beard. It's funky. It is. How do you know? It is. And it can't be KD because he only played there. This is no, three no years. He, has, he hasn't no, played there long enough. No, yeah, he hasn't no, played there no, long enough. No. I'm not going to get you started, Haley. I'm not. No, <laughs> no. Plus, he's not, a, he's not even a superstar. Gotta, uh, no, I'm no, going no. Kyrie Irving. I, I, you can't say because you're going to get Haley to jump through the screen on both of us. That's what she's going to do. Uh, yeah, no. So, Irv and okay. both KD are out. So, when I think about the best net of all time, well, again, Doc played in the ABA. So, I mean, Buck Williams was 18 and 10, and he was an all-star, and he was in the playoffs a number of years. What about, was uh, Jay Kidd ever a... Yes, Jason yeah. Kidd, Kidd too. took that team to two so, back-to-back finals. Two fi- I don't two know back if I'd have, have him over Dr. J, but, I mean... Two of them. He's up there, yeah. Uh, there's not a huge line to choose from, I feel like. No, no the, not. Nets, the Nets have been a That's bad easy. franchise. Yes, they have. Yeah. When you think about it, they're yes, bad. They I'm, an, I'm, a, I'm okay with Dr. J because I think... All the players that have played for the variations of the Nets, no one was, I think, better and more impactful than Dr. J to the game of basketball. So, so I'll, I'll, I'm okay oh. with Dr. J. All right. Okay, I like it. Uh, so the Charlotte Hornets. Kemba okay, so Walker. we need to clarify. So we need to clarify. Yeah. Because the Charlotte Hornets, aka oh, the, so Charlotte, the Hornets organization, right? So is it the Hornets organization Bobcat? that ended up becoming? Uh, the New Orleans Pelicans? No, nah, because the Pelicans moved. They, they they moved to Oklahoma City, and that that that's no, no, good. no. Didn't didn't so Hornets, with, 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 Yeah, the with Hornets Charlotte. moved. The Hornets moved to New Orleans. Right, right. Became the New Orleans Orland, The New Orleans Hornets, Changed and eventually name. the Pelicans. Changed and then name. the yes. Charlotte Bobcats were created, and then eventually became the Charlotte Hornets again. So let's so stick with Charlotte then. How about that? So How about are we, we just gonna say the Hornets? city of Charlotte? Yes, let, let's stick okay. with Charlotte. I'm cool okay. with that. I'm, I'm so, cool so I'm going to go Alonzo Mourning, not Kemba Walker. Nope. Lonzo I Kemba- Mourning. He only played there three years, Tom. Larry Johnson. No, I'm uh, No, I'm, I'm I'm not saying he's the GOAT. I'm saying uh, I have Alonzo over Kemba. I'm just going to say all the people I have over I have Larry Johnson over Kemba. I, I got I Muggsy it. Bogues over Kemba. I, I got I got LJ over I Kemba got, too. I got Kemba. I got I got uh uh Kendall Gill over Kemba. <laughs> Mm, I ain't gonna go that far. <laughs> I'm not gonna go that far. I was trying to think of one that was gonna be close. Now, but, don't get me wrong, Tone. Kemba did make the All Star team four times, right? He he did make the All NBA team, but Larry Johnson did the same thing. Larry Johnson also made the he made the All Star team. He made the, but he only made the All Star team twice. LJ did. He only made the All Star team twice. Made the All NBA team once, and he only played in Charlotte for five years. Mm, yeah. So. Now, when you talk about longevity, Kemba is the guy. When you talk about longevity, Kemba is absolutely the guy. Yeah. So, I mean, okay. that one's 
Yeah. I just should go a few ways. I, just, I think he's not. <sighs> Kemba's just not even the best. I know that it's about longevity and. Mm-hmm. It, like, there, how, uh, how question- was the third? How was the third best player I can think of off the top of my head? The, their goat. That's just that's CP3, hard. Hard. People for are me. questioning. Well, because CP3, CP3, no, CP3, we're going to put oh, into different. the New Orleans. Yeah, that's different. Oh, Orleans, oh, that, that, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Pelicans, and for everybody right. in the chat, I, I said Brooklyn, I New Jersey at that time, whatever. Um, right. All right, moving on to the Bulls, MJ. Well, nope. to, uh, can I actually no? How about Charlotte? If they if they kept their uh, their pick, it would have been Kobe. No. My yeah, would have been Kobe. Kobe. Question is, what, yeah, what, but, the question is, what would have happened with Kobe though? What would they have done with him? Down? Yeah, he would have. Yeah, that career would on that on that team. Career. I think yeah, that well, team would have been good. I mean, that was a fifty win team, no doubt. And he's right? going into a, he's going into just as good a situation in Los Angeles. I mean, in Charlotte as he is in Los Angeles. But how would they welcome him in Charlotte? Because I think that in Los Angeles it was different because that was Jerry West's guy. That was Jerry West's guy, and I think that they were honing him to be that. In Charlotte with Larry Johnson, and don't forget they blew that unit up with Larry Johnson and yeah, I, and, I, and, and that was crazy. Martin, but they ended up yeah, once, after they brought in Vladi, they were yeah. like, we made a mistake. Yeah, yeah, they blew that unit up. Yeah, Del Curry right. was on. Um, okay, we got next the picture, please. They're they're asking to get rid of the picture. Oh, to get um, rid of the picture? Okay, we get rid of the picture. Yeah, I can definitely just read it too if if it's hard huh. to. There you go. To see. Alrighty. Um, so up next we have the Bulls. I guess they want to see my smiling face. No question yes, with do. the Bulls. I don't need yeah, to it's Scotty yeah, Pippen. No yeah, Scotty, no doubt. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Artist Gilmore number two. Artist Gilmore number two. Yeah. Um who's who's my guy? He was averaging 20 points a game in, in 84. Uh, I always Reggie, forget his name. Reggie oh, oh, no, Orlando Woolridge. Oh, Orlando, Orlando Woolridge. Woolridge. Yeah, yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. But this, this, this ain't even a question. It, it, it's the, it's the dude. No, you know, yeah. you know yeah. some young, you know some young cats would be like Derrick Rose. No. Mm-mm. Oh no. no, no, that's whoa. No, that's whoa. won an MVP. Yeah. Not even all right, Jordan. Yes, Jordan. That's yeah. Yeah. blasphemous. We could move. Uh, <laughs> all right, Cleveland Cavaliers. Same, same idea. This, this is isn't, isn't even a question either. Nope. Mavs jerk. Is LeBron? LeBron. LeBron uh, with the Cavs, is that what he said? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. He played, I think he played long enough, and I doubt there was there's nobody better. Even no. Even no. I don't think there's anybody yeah. that actually played longer. Even he was there eleven years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Mavs are is Dirk. Any I think the Mavs are minutes? Dirk. I think the Mavs are yeah. Dirk. Mm-hmm. For, for now, uh, Denver Nikola Jokic. Is it Joker though? And mm-hmm. the reason why I'm asking you this is because ah. I think. Again, well, we, we ain't talking about the best player. We're talking about the player for that organization. Uh, That's what we're talking about. And when I think about Alex English, he's their all-time leading scorer, most mo- most points, average the most points. Not only did he average the most points, he in the top five in blocks. He in the, t- he in the top five in blocks. He in the top five in steals. He in the top five in rebounds. Him and Dan Issel. So when I think about the Denver Nuggets, Joker been there seven years. Is he going to surpass him right now? I ain't, I ain't talking about players because he a better player than Alex English. I ain't fighting that. But as a nugget, I mean, he did take them to the Western Conference Finals. Alex English did. So I'm not re- I'm not ready to just hand. Even though Jokic is a two time league MVP, I ain't gonna fight that part. Yeah. But as a nugget, as a nugget, I, I just want to go there. I think that's fair. Uh, okay. Okay, we'll move on real quick. Um, I, I muted myself when I said, oh. "Excuse me." I was saying, "Yes, I'm I'm with you on Alex English," and, and I think okay. I agree. Jokic yeah. is a better player. Wait. He needs yes. a few more years. Yeah, that's it. So, yeah, I was gonna say it's it's still uh, a bit early. Um, already, we have the Pistons. Isaiah Thomas. I think that's fair. Good. I'm good. I'm good with Isaiah Thomas. Yes. Yeah, I'm 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 thinking, but I think I'm good with that. Yeah. I was okay. thinking about Joe Dumas. I was thinking about Bill and Beer. I was thinking about Dave Bing. Uh, I was thinking about um, uh, what's his name, Bob Bob Lanier. I was thinking about Bob Lanier as well. But ultimately, I mean Isaiah Thomas, you know, all-time assist leader, yeah. games played. Mello Mello is not the best Nugget ever. Stop. No. Yeah, he's not. Mm-mm. No, 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 no. Yeah, I'm good with Isaiah. We're, I'm, I, we're we're in agreement with Isaiah. I'm, I'm good with Isaiah. Um, okay, next one. Uh, my dubs, Steph Curry. I'm curious. Do you do you think Steph Curry is a goat of the Dubs? Yes, no. I'm cool with that. I'm, I am. I'm cool with that. H Boogie. No. You're Wilt. putting Steph over Wilt. 
Wilt only played there three years. That's it. Is yeah. that always See, that's oh, my right. hesitation. That's Wilt only played there three yeah, years. Okay. Which, yeah. That's it. Okay. Cool. I, some people still fight that, so I mean, and I'm fine. No, no, no. I, I, when we we think about the longevity piece of it, he, yeah. yeah, he's right. He's right. Because Tom, what uh, we got to remember too, and I know that you, I, I know that we get, we get like you just talked about with Bill Russell and Larry Bird, we get screwed up between the better player, yeah, and, and, and player the franchise. Yeah, fair, fair well, enough. We, we forget can that. You, can you be a goat on multiple teams? Yeah. Oh yeah, of course. So. So. Uh, we'll, we'll get there. I'll ask but, you but to be a, to be, I think to be considered the best, like the goat of a team. Yes. You have we'll to have, have been there for a certain amount of years. Mm -hmm. Like you, yeah. you would have had to do something, right? A chunk yeah. of your career. Like there. you can't go. You can't go. You know, you might be the best player to ever play on a team. Like okay, I'll give you a, an example really quick. Like um, the best player to ever play on the Toronto Raptors was. Tell us, I, was, I was waiting for you. Oh, you want me to tell you? Um, the best player to ever play on the Raptors, not in their prime, was Hakeem oh. Olajuwon, but in their prime was Kawhi Leonard. Leonard but neither right. one of them that's, would be the goat of the Raptors, right? Because right. they both yeah. played their one season. So right. actually, Olajuwon, I don't even think, finished his first season. So so that's, yeah, they have to play there and do something. Yes, go ahead. Speaking of okay. Olajuwon. Speaking of Olajuwon, uh, Rockets. On that subject, they got Hakeem. Yeah. 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 That, yeah. That's easy. That's easy. Easy, that's easy, easy. easy. Yep. Pacers, Olajuwon. Reggie Miller. I think I think I'm cool with that. I agree with that one. Yeah, yeah. I'm cool with that. Pay, he was a pacer through and through. Uh, okay, Clippers, Chris Paul. Hmm. Was Chris hmm. Paul a better Clipper than Bob McAdoo? And that was the name that came hmm. in my head. That's mm -hmm. what I, 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 I was really originally like thinking it. But when I think about what Chris Paul did with the Clippers, and I think about I me, mean, Bob McAdoo did lead the league in scoring. Um, I mean, he did take the Clippers to the playoffs. Chris Paul played with the Clippers around the same amount of years as Bob McAdoo, but when I think about what Chris Paul did with the Clippers, I I have to put him ahead of Bob McAdoo, even though I'm not a, a big Chris success. Paul guy. Yeah, just a yeah, just a little same. bit more. Mm -hmm. Right there with yeah. I'm I'm, um, a, I'm 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 gonna go with Bob McAdoo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's split. I th I think both can be. Depends what you um are looking at, but all right. Uh, Lakers, we have Kobe. We good yep. with that? I'm good with that. Magic. I was gonna say I'm surprised, fluent. Magic. No, magic. Listen, magic is the better player to the th to their to the point. Mm -hmm. Kobe is the better Laker, and that's only because Magic's career got cut short. So Kobe, okay. Kobe did it's something that Magic couldn't do, which was three peat. Kobe mm -hmm. did something that Magic couldn't do, which was win with a much lesser team. Mm -hmm. um so so for, and, and he played there in 20 years so mm -hmm. that's the only now now this is just players i do want to say this person's name because i think it's important because sometimes people say you know the best for the best person for their franchise the best person for the lakers franchise was jerry west because mm -hmm. not only did he take them to the finals a number of times although he only won one but as an executive well heck he's the one that brought all these guys in he's yeah, the one yeah. that brought Shaq and kobe together so um but as a player i think kobe, kobe. Kobe's the GOAT because of his longevity. Again, Magic, I think, was the better player, just only almost half the amount of time, though, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And what and, and all the stuff that he did. Won the league MVP three times. Won yeah. the final MVP three yeah. times. Won the NBA championship five times. Was first team all NBA all of those years. So when I think about Magic, when I think about when I think about Magic, when I think about Bryant, when I think about a Laker, I'm not thinking about a player. I'm thinking yeah, about as a, a as a Laker. As, as a Laker. For, and for me, it's only because I have to pick one. If it's right. me, yeah. actually, I'm, I'm having them together. Yeah, I'm all yeah. about I'm I'm all about togetherness. If I can, yes. I go on a little quick monologue. Like yeah. for the yeah. Lakers, I would have Kobe and Magic standing side by side, just like I'm going to start something. I'm going to I'm going to start. The chat's going to go nuts when I say this. When LeBron retires, mm -hmm. I feel that LeBron and Jordan. And the NBA should have a ceremony where they retire the number 23 from the NBA forever in a joint jersey ceremony because no one after Jordan and LeBron should ever wear 23. Yeah. Like just uh, enough. Yeah, we got okay. lucky enough. With, it was enough with Jordan. And then you had another guy do it for 20 years. Yeah. Just okay. No one else should wear that number. But that's, yeah, the bar is high enough. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the bar. Yeah, you can. Can you imagine? Yeah. Someone else? Can anyone? Yeah, I hope. Those two? But I would I'll, love to see it. If it happens, it. I don't think I'm going to be allowed to see it. If, you know, yeah. I won't be allowed to see it. I don't <laughs> think me so. Either. <laughs> me either. All righty. Moving on to the Grizzlies, Mark Sol. Tone, this is tough for me, man, because 
I think about what Mike Conley did for the Grizzlies. I, I, that's the name that came into my my head was I, Mike I, Conley. I, the problem. Um, the problem. I know, that, I know a guy who only played there for about half a year. Mm-hmm. Uh, Terry DeHair. He he, he should be. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. great, great country Reeves, but no, uh, I, I think it's actually Mike Conley for me. Well, when I think about what what Gasol did there, he made the All NBA team a bunch of different times. I know, and the he deep boy that he stole from you, guy. Deep, and I think that Mike Conley, he might have been at that time when he was running around, he might have been the best point guard not to make the All Star team because Darren Williams was running around, Chris Paul was running around, Westbrook. Uh, 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 Tony Parker, all of these dudes was running around. But when I think about Mike Conley as a Grizzly, I mean, he's the all-time assist leader. He's the all-time steals leader. He's the all-time points leader. So Mike Conley is a big deal with the with the Memphis Grizzlies. Memphis Grizzlies. Played, I, think, I think he played 14 years there, something like that, 14, 15 years there. So I, I, th- I think I'm con- – I, I wish Sharif Abdul-Rahim would have played longer because it'd be yeah. him. It'd be easy. But no, be I, think, I think it's Mike Conley, and I think it's Mike Conley, and I think Mike Conley, and I think mm. that's not ridiculous. That's not ridiculous to say that. That's for the chat. Mm-hmm. All right. All righty, Miami D Wade. Yes, I'm yeah. good with that. Cool. James was a better player. Chris Bosh was was awesome, but ultimately they're going to build yeah. a statue outside the arena, and it's going to be because of James. I mean, I'm well, sorry. He never. He Wade. Play. Yeah, Wade never should have left. It was it was weird seeing him in it in, in, in any other jersey. Uh, I wish he would just would have never. I wish Wade would have just forever played in Miami. I told you, I told you, Tom. Pat Riley said he regrets the way he handled Wade's yeah. contract yeah. negotiations to this day. He regrets yeah. it. He said that. I, I agree with Pat Riley. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> All righty, Milwaukee Bucks, Giannis. No. Kumbo. Not yet. Not yet. Mm-mm. Why are they throwing in these Jokic, Giannis? Uh, I, I think someone tampered with this with this list before they sent it to me. But either way, um, <laughs> all right. Is it Oscar or is it Kareem? I think it's Jabbar. Oscar. First of all, he only got he got Oscar. He got Oscar on the other side of his career. Oscar only played yeah. there for four years. Because I keep forgetting the Royals were. Yeah, Kansas yeah. City Royals, right? Yeah. That became the, the Kansas City Kings uh, or yeah, the Sacramento the King. Kings. Yeah, yeah, that's the King. So. Yeah. When I think about Jabbar, Jabbar in six years did more than what Giannis has done today. Kareem. He did oh, more. That was Kareem, and that was Kareem's prime. Right. Like we forget that he played for 20 years, right? So right. his yeah. best years were actually in Milwaukee. Three, yeah, three league yeah. MVPs, went to the NBA Finals twice, won the Finals MVP. He's the all-time leading scorer. He, or, I think Giannis, I think Giannis, just, I think Giannis, just, Giannis like, may have passed him now, yeah. Giannis, just, Giannis maybe just passed him. He's still the all-time uh, rebound leader. He's the all-time shot block leader. So Giannis is not that guy yet. I don't think so. Yeah. I think, I think he will become. Not that way, but... I think he's gonna stay. I think he's gonna stay longer. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, so, yeah. That's oh fair. yeah. Oh yeah. Um, all right. Is Moncrief? Sorry, because someone said it in the chat. Is Moncrief in that conversation? He, for yes, you? he is. Yes, it, yes, Sidney Moncrief is in that conversation. But he wasn't better than Jabbar, though, and he was awesome, no doubt about yeah, it. Yeah, no, he was. Yeah, absolutely, no doubt. Uh, so Timberwolves KG. Yes. Yeah. The way that they did KG up there for them twelve people, all all people talk about Haley is KG playing in Boston. They forget twelve of his seventeen seasons was in Minnesota. He's the best player in the history of their organization, and it's not a question. No. And, only and, and let's be clear, those were the twelve best years of his career. Even though he won, by the, by the way, in Boston, yeah. by the way, KG by the way. was a problem. Yes. Yeah. 12 years up there. The only time they went to the Western Conference Championship with KG, the only league MVP that they've ever had up there, KG. So he's the best player in the history of their organization, no doubt. Yep. Okay. Uh, Pelicans. Chris Paul on here again. Fly, Pelicans. Fly. Now, Tone, uh, I, I, know, <laughs> I, I know that what you're looking at. I, I know that you're giving me that side eye because I know you don't want to hear this, but just so you know, Anthony Davis did a lot. Day to day, did I know you don't want to hear this tone? But day to day, day to day, it played seven years in 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 Oklahoma, not in Oklahoma. I'm sorry for the New Orleans Pelicans. And in the seven years that he played there, in the seven years that he played there, three times, he finished in the top ten in league MVP votes. Chris Paul only did it twice. All right, that's number one. Number two, he made the All NBA team just as many times as Chris Paul did in New Orleans, three times. I, he was he was I think he finished second in defensive player of the year. They went to the playoffs. They got out of the first round off the strength of him. When I think about the New Orleans, I'm, I'm, and I know you don't want to hear that tone, but it's not a wash that Chris Paul is the best player in the history of the New Orleans Pelicans. He's not. 
I'm going to go with the true greatest player in Pelicans history. Oh, boy. Zion. Yeah. Can we it get was a double, good. Can Zion. we get a double boo? Can we get a double boo? Can, can, can we do that? Uh, <laughs> you want more boos? Uh, all kinds of garbage. Garbage. But he, but he may be their goat by the end. All right. Yes, he may be. Fingers crossed. He may, he may be the end. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with CP3 um, over day to day. Okay. <laughs> today all right let's get through these last ones real quick yep. uh nicks patrick ewing yes good i'm good with that yep do it oh yeah yeah yeah. i'm good with that okay cool uh magic dwight howard actually me on the Knicks, you wouldn't go back to like their championship years no 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 okay okay even even though willis reed was awesome no doubt i was gonna about say it. willis reed it was the name nah. that was popping into my head not, yeah not ewing nope he wasn't ewing no i know he wasn't Ewing. but again ewing's a better player Right. Was Reed the better Nick? No, I don't think so. Mm-mm. Well, Frazier had the best sideburns. Yes, he did. And the, <laughs> and, and the best gear, too. Nobody was cleaner than, <laughs> nobody was cleaner than Cloud. Dude, nobody. His, yo, Walt Frazier's drip would work today. Stop playing, man. <laughs> what? They'll be lined up outside the arena just to show up to make sure that when Clyde showed up, that's how clean he was. Yep. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, so... Oh, I skipped. OKC. OKC. We're at OKC. Yeah, KD. Is it KD, Tom? Is it KD? Is it? I no, I don't think, think it's KD. I think it's Russ. I think it's. You think it's Russ? I think it's Russ. Maybe so, because if you do, it is. Are you? Russ think, are you? Are you forgetting Seattle? Well, Gary Payton already told me that he he wants nothing to do with the Seattle. He's because the, they, they asked to retire his jersey. He was like, I did not play for the Oklahoma City Thunder. He made that crystal clear. Good. So you know, so he wants no him. affiliation with the Oklahoma City Thunder. He made that clear. I did not play in Oklahoma Good City. For him. I played in Seattle. He made Seattle, that clear. About, Seattle needs a team. Mm-hmm. I was going to say in the next clear. two years, maybe they if they created Good. a team, it's just not the same. And they, and they need to give know. the history back. Oklahoma, yeah. yeah, I don't Actually, like that yeah. the history follows the no, when you change the name. I don't like that. Uh, yeah. You know what? But but Ru- would you have Russ over Gary Payton? Yeah, I would. Wow. Yeah, I would, Tom. I Actually, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me let me let me let me get a hold of myself first of all. Yeah, whoa, whoa. yeah. Let, let me get a hold of myself. Are we forgetting we're talking, something? We're, to, we're, to, we're talking we about a player, okay? And I'm not just talking about a player. I'm talking about a guy who, what Gary Payton did for Oklahoma, Gary Payton did for Seattle. Seattle, yeah. How good he was as a as a, as a lead guard. He's their all time assist leader. He's their all time in Seattle. I think he's their all time points leader, um, steals leader. Russ did win the league MVP, though. Can I, I need to call a quick timeout. I need to qu- a quick timeout for this chat. Chat. Yeah. This is not the best player to play no, for the franchise. It's the greatest, like, for that franchise. So it's not just – it's not who's the best player who ever played no. there. It's who did the most, who was the most right. influential. Yes, wins do matter as well. Right. But, like, you know, like, when you leave a team – that knocks your Correct. ability yes. to be their goat. Yes. LeBron James is better than Dwayne Wade. He is not a better Heat. He, he's not a better Heat. Right. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. Not exactly. the way that so works. Then, no. So then it is. I, I think it's it very Peyton. Rust. I think it's Russ, H Boogie. I do. I think it is. I think I'm sticking Russ. with Peyton. I'll let okay. you guys can okay. have Russ. Okay. I'm sticking with Peyton. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Have we agreed um, on any of these? <laughs> A few of LeBron them. LeBron and MJ. LeBron, <laughs> LeBron and MJ. Yeah, the, the two easy. Yeah, ones. the two, the two easy ones. Okay, um, Sixers. Moses Malone. Oh, you don't you want know. to do Orlando? We did. We oh, said I Dwight Howard. We did. Yeah. We did. I thought we were still talking Twice. about OKC and and. and, yeah, and but yeah, but I skipped ahead and then I went back. But yeah. I'll, do you oh. have a problem with Dwight? Yeah, I have tons or of problems with like... Dwight. I'm all ears yeah. to hear this one, Tom. What's <laughs> your, what's I have tons of problems with Dwight. Yeah. Who? Who you got? Do not say Shaq. Don't say no, no, Shaq. Shaq didn't play, no, the, Shaq didn't no, play there long enough. No, Shaq didn't no. play there long enough. Okay. Uh, I'm just I'm trying to think of I, I'm trying to think else? of anyone other than Dwight because I just don't like Dwight. Nick Nick Anderson, Dennis Scott. No. Uh-uh. None Scott of them. Skiles. Do. Didn't Scott he have like Skiles. 30 assists in one game? He did have 30 uh, assists in one game. Uh, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's Dwight Howard. It's okay, it's probably Dwight it's Howard. it's probably you want to be Superman. Mm-hmm. It's Dwight Howard. Okay, Moses Malone for the Sixers. Nope. No. Nope. No. No. 
Nope. Oh, he was a better rocket than he was a sixer. Yes, he was. Mm-hmm. I uh, how long did Chuck play there for? You 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 gonna kill me for this one, Tom? You're gonna say Doctor J for this one? I am not gonna say Doctor J. Who you gonna? Say? Oh, let me think. Hold on. Oh, right. Al Neverson. Nope. Mm-mm. Oh, who? Older or younger? Chamberlain. Oh, Chamberlain. Chamberlain. How long did he play for the Sixers? Oh yeah. Chamberlain, all and, four of his league MVPs, he got with the 76ers. The 76ers, yeah. The, the, the one MVP, the, 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 the year that they won the NBA championship in 67, that's the only team that beat the Celtics in the entire decade. That was Chamberlain. That was it. His best seasons that he's had that he had, like the year that he led the league in assists, the sixes, the 50 and 26 season that was in Philadelphia. It's Chamberlain. Yeah, he's right. He's right. Can't just skip Wilt like that. Who made but, this? But Wilt, Wilt, Wilt didn't on. exist. Right, that we got to H Boogie. We got to make sure that we get to the bottom of this because my man Tone right here, who is Greek and he very much studies Greek mythology, he is yeah. under the impression that there was a. I have to. I have to keep bashing this into his brain that from 1959 to 1973, there was a guy that played in the NBA named Wilt. Chamberlain. I think they just wrote him into the history book. He doesn't believe that that dude existed. That they dude. Could've, is- <laughs> they could have. There's no proof. There's just a picture. And you know what's even scarier is a dude that looks exactly like that guy is on the courts today. Yeah, so, yeah. He just signed. With the Ra- he just signed with the Raptors. That's what I want to know. Y'all yeah, who is that like guy? Y'all, y'all do kind of look alike. I don't know what's going on. Hey, there, do, you, do you know? Do you know what I'm gonna do? Uh, just quick side note before we get to the next team. Um, so. So it took years for them to come up with that uh, radio, um, that radio broadcast of of uh, Will hundred point game, hundred point, yeah, so called uh, yeah. hundred point hundred point game. I'm gonna listen to that game, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna keep track of every time he scored a point. I'm gonna mm-hmm. and I'm gonna I'm gonna see if, how much okay. he really scored. It, it might be hundred and ten. So here's my here's my issue with Will. So he okay. plays three. For five years with Philadelphia slash San Francisco Warriors. He plays four years with Philadelphia and he plays five years with the Lakers. Yeah. Can you, how can he be? I, I know all his okay. accolades are amazing and all that stuff. But so, does, does he play long enough at any of those franchises to be their best? So he plays three years with the Philadelphia Warriors. Yeah. Then the 76ers show up in the 63 season. Warriors move to San Francisco. Yeah. All right. He plays with them. Then he comes back two years later and plays for the 76ers. Yes. And then he then all of all of his great all, all of his accomplishments. So are you are you putting the three Philadelphia Warriors years with the three Philadelphia or yes. 76ers? Okay. Yes. If you do that, then okay, yes. That's what I'm doing. That's what that's exactly what I'm doing. Okay. Uh, I love the chat. Aren't we all Wilt's children? You know what? Probably right. It was Adam, Eve, and Wilt. Those I were the three people that populated surprised. the earth. You're correct. I would not be surprised. <laughs> Wilt. Oh, man. Wilt, 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 uh, that explains a lot. You know, I have, you can't, I don't know if you can see it on this camera because I got like a, you know, I have that same, you know, that mole or whatever. You might you have that. You, 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 you and Wilt might you be related. Oh, yeah. 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 Similar yeah, yeah. placement. Okay. You never know. You never know. Wilt. I d- I want, I, I, want, I want some of the, I want some of that inheritance world. <laughs> uh, I think that got split a lot of ways. Yeah, already, yeah, but, yeah. That's um, cool. We should do a an episode where we do uh, conspiracy theories, like NBA conspiracy theories. Yeah, Tone did that. We, we used to do that last oh, season. Yeah, oh, I'd love to do okay. it again. I would love to bring that yeah. back. Oh, I want to hear. I'm, I'm a huge conspiracy it. theorist. I'm, I'm a I huge. Too. Do you know that? Do you know that because Jay and I did an episode about whether, like, again, it was conspiracy, and we talked about whether the Earth was flat or round. Oh, that I, I got that flat guy. Earth. That I got flat Earth. Dave, who is like the predominant, like the voice of the flat Earthers. He mm-hmm. his people contacted me, and we did a show together. It's on Sports Fluent. Uh, on my YouTube channel, he yep. and I did a one-on-one, and he explained his theory of why the Earth is flat. He believes and I, it, like, and I, he believes it, and, like and you know not- what? He believes it so much so that after I finished the interview, I went to Mrs. Fluid and I said, 
I don't believe it, but man, he made some really good points. Like, yeah. Yeah, Bone told me he had him sucked in. He had Tone on the hook, Helly. He, he like, no. uh, right. He, he had him on the hook. He had Tone like, thinking, is the world, is the earth really flat? I, I I would, I, you know what? He made such a compelling point that I actually yeah. I wanted it to be true because the way he yeah. made the team was like, oh, I wish it was like that. There was like this whole utopian <laughs> yeah. thing beyond Alaska is a, is, is a, is a world where there's still like dinosaurs and you know, fresh water and energy and life. And I'm like, cool, we can go there when this one falls no. apart. I love it. No. I always but, say, like, have you ever flown in a plane? You can see, like, the curvation of the earth when you're flying. Right. But, hey, I'm, I love this. You, should go, you should go watch that episode, Haley. You might I will. Your I mind. will. You might change your mind. I might. I, yep. Okay. Uh, I might, I might post it just to drive more. you nuts, just to drive Jade nuts. I might actually post it here on Chill Down Hoops. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> I have access. Maybe we'll get Kyrie to come in. Uh, so, Phoenix Sun, Steve Nash. Cool I'm good with that. with that. Yeah, I'm good with that. Yeah. He did all-time assist leader, two-time league MVP. Uh, yeah, I'm good with that. Tom Chambers. Oh. You can make that argument, uh, Tom Chambers. Yeah, you could, Tom. Yes, you could. Forget, I just want to say his name because no one talks about Tom Chambers, but I, I agree argument. that it's Steve Nash. But look up Tom Chambers, man. That dude was yeah. good. Uh, the one and only Portland Trailblazer, Clyde Drexler. Drex. Yes. I'm uh, good with Drex. I'm good with now, that. I, I'm, I'm not, there, there's some people who will say Dame, but uh, not yet. Not yet. No, not yet. Not, not yet. yet. Agreed. Mm-hmm. Not yet. Uh, Kings, Oscar Robertson. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Hands down. Let, let's be clear. The Sacramento Kings were the Kansas City Kings were the Kansas City Royals, right? Like, so mm-hmm. that's, 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 how we're, that's how we're going to get back. Cincinnati yeah. Royals, yes. Sure. Cincinnati Royals, yes. Mm-hmm. Correct. Ooh. Uh, Spurs, Tim Duncan, yes or no? Yes, I'm good with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm good with that. George Gervin was awesome, no doubt about that. David Robinson was awesome, but yeah, yeah. I can't, I can't have a player who, like, to make it easy, I can't have a player who's in my top ten, who won five, like, is five and one in the finals, yeah, multiple time MVP, all defensive team, like everything, and played his whole career in San Antonio. Like, how is he? Like, he did yeah, everything. He is that guy. Play. He is, right. yeah. Right. Uh, all right. Uh, your Raptors, Kyle Lowry. 100%. I don't know, Tone. I don't, DeMar DeRozan did some pretty interesting things there. He made the All-NBA team more than Kyle Lowry did. He did all-time points mm-hmm. leader. I think he did all-time steals leader. Um, I believe Lowry all- actually passed him for a couple of those things. I, I think he just passed. I, I think he, I think he might have just passed him last season in steals, maybe. But other than that... DeMar DeRozan is in the top five in almost every major category with the Toronto Raptors. Made the All-NBA team more times in Toronto than Kyle Lowry. And he played there longer. I think he played eight seasons in in Toronto. (coughs) So DeMar DeRozan, so this is a good case. And then I'll tell you the one Mm -hmm. thing, the one reason why. So most games played, DeRozan. Minutes, DeRozan. Field goals, DeRozan. Attempts, DeRozan. Um, three point field goals, Lowry. Mm-hmm. Um, field goals missed, DeRozan. No, uh, f- uh free throws, DeRozan. Mm-hmm. Offensive rebounds, Bosch. Oh, actually, rebounds, Bosch. Defensive, offensive total. Assists, Lowry. Steals, mm-hmm. Lowry. Blocks, Bosch. Um, points, DeRozan. Triple doubles, Lowry. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think I think you're I think you're right. I think he might have more more of those all times, but. But I have a hard time giving it to the guy that needed to be traded away for them to win a championship. Hmm. So I give it to Kyle Lowry, one, because he, he's got the ring, two, because he's my family's favorite player that played that, that was played for the Raptors. So my family takes precedent. Kyle Lowry, give, give him the check mark. Hmm. Okay. But, um, I, but DeRozan has a, has a case. The DeRozan has a case. I wish they, never, I wish they could have won with him. I wish they didn't have to trade him. Those two guys together were, were actually they were, they were they were fun. They they were like best buds. It was so like honestly talking to, 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 to watch Toronto to watch Toronto to watch Toronto win it after he got traded. It was dope, but it sucked also. It, it was it was bittersweet. It was yeah, bittersweet. It was. Yeah. Yeah, I had uh, I had um um Shaylin Noise, uh, who does like Raptor reporting on the mm-hmm. show. We talked about it because she's a big Raptor fan. Go check her out on uh, the real love boat coming out, I think, in a couple of weeks. Um, and she was the same thing. She was like, I'm so excited that we won, but, uh, mm-hmm. but it was sad that it wasn't what not quite the same. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 
Uh, okay, two more. Uh, we got the Utah Jazz, Carl Malone. I think that's self-explanatory. Yeah, that's easy. That. Yep. Um, and then the Washington Wizards, Wes Unseld. I was a little torn with this one, Tone, because I think about how good Elvin Hayes was there. And even though Wes Unseld did win the league MVP as a rook, he did win the finals MVP, even though Elvin Hayes averaged more points and more rebounds in the finals than he did, I think I think Elvin Hayes averages. I'm sorry. I think West Unsell averages more rebounds, but Elvin Hayes. I think West Unsell averages more rebounds, but Elvin Hayes averages more points. I thought Elvin Hayes should have won the Finals MVP. He went 21 and 11 in that series against Seattle, and they beat them in seven games. And I thought that when I think about those guys for seven years, even though Elvin, I mean, even though West Unsell leads them in a lot of major categories, he <laughs> might be. I, w- I was just torn by it, Tone. I, I wasn't sure that it was West Unsell. When I think about what Elvin Hayes did there, it it, it, pro- it, it probably is El- it probably is Wes Unsell, but I think Elvin Hayes got a really good case. I think it's Bradley Beal, and after that, Michael Jordan. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm good. I'm good with Wes Unsell. Going through all these teams, it made me think of something. Mm-hmm. You have to pick one team. You can only pick one team. Haley and 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 Jay, you both have to pick one team. Mm-hmm. You either change keep their their name when i say their name like their nickname of their team keep that the same and change their city or or move them and completely change you can only pick one so so i'll use an example like you want to move it, no i won't give you an example because that might be the one you want to take so you can only pick one that you can change their city or change their name who would you do well, that's easy for me the chicago heat the Chicago Heat. Yeah, let's move. Let, let's move Chicago to Miami. Why would you move Chicago to Miami? Yeah, with, with, with Jordan and Scottie Pippen. Oh, absolutely. Chicago Heat. <laughs> what? That's Wait. crazy. Well, what's the point? Like, am I moving because I like the city, or am I? Okay, here. Let me give you. Let me give you mine. Okay, it's the, okay. it's the one that drives me the craziest of all. Okay. The Utah Jazz. There's nothing jazz in, in Utah. As a bu- as no. a, you can ask Jay, who had to no. live in Utah, they, they outlawed <laughs> jazz music years ago. <laughs> jazz in Utah. Hey, I like jazz music. Jazz music. I, I didn't. I don't. I didn't say it was bad. I said Utah won't let you play. They don't let you yeah. dance. It's oh, like football. Oh, 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 they won't oh, let yeah, you yeah, dance. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. Right? Like obviously it's because New Orleans, but like I just either change your name <laughs> to the Utah Snore or or move to another, <laughs> to another town and be the jazz. That's fair. Yeah, that's that fair? fair. All yeah. right. So now that you know my example, who would you do? Like even the Grizzlies. Like the Grizzlies made yeah, sense I in don't... Vancouver. It doesn't make sense in Memphis. Well, they've never seen a Grizzly bear in Memphis. Grizzlies, the Grizzlies need something like tougher. Tougher? What's tougher than a Grizzly? Mountain lions or something. Mountain lions aren't tougher than Grizzlies. <laughs> grizzly bears eat mountain lions. Polar bears. Uh, I don't know. There's no polar bears in Memphis either. What about what, what about DC the Wizards? How y'all come up with? I, I, yeah, I, know I was the bullet, thinking of the Wizards. I, I, well, I know the bullets. I, don't like that. I know the I know the bullets. I know the bullets was 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 something different, but we could come up with something better than the Wizards. Yeah. Well, like you um, can come up with something better than the Pelicans. Yeah. We could come up with something I better. Keep, I always Pelicans. I always anytime I hear the word Pelican, I think of uh, was it Scarface? Fly, yes. Pelican, fly. <laughs> Many oh look God. at the Pelican. Come on, Pelican, yeah. fly, Pelican. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, but... those are those are some names. All right, you pick one. To... Pick one. Haley, pick yours. I got the jazz okay. in, being the Utah like... score. Who you got? Um I, I'm I have to think. I guess I'll change the You can either change the city or the name. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter. Okay, well if I'm gonna if I'm here trying to save a team that's garbage, uh or not doing well, um I like the Pelicans. I'll take the Pelicans and I'm going to place them in. I'm going to place them. Somewhere in California, but not Sacramento. Mm -hmm. Maybe the Clippers. I'm going to switch the Clippers and the Pelicans and I'm going to make the Pelicans the LA Pelicans. (laughs) And move and move the and move the paper clicks back to San Diego where they belong. Yeah. No, listen, there's only one team. There's, listen, there's only one team in LA, and that's the Lakers. So that's a terrible idea. Um, you can move them to you can move them to Kansas City. I'll let you move them to Kansas City. They deserve it to me. They do deserve it. Or maybe team. Vegas. They could go be the Vegas, oh. they could be the Vegas chips. 
No, they don't. The, 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 Vegas, City, the, the Vegas, not the, the if Vegas. We, if we moving that's teams, not. if we are moving teams, Seattle, the NBA Seattle. needs to be back in Seattle. That's it. I don't yes. want to talk about nobody else, Tone. I don't want to hear Kansas City. I don't want to hear Baltimore. I don't want to hear nobody. Vegas. I don't want to hear nobody else until the NBA is back in Seattle. Period. All right. All right, mm-hmm. Alrighty, you guys. Uh, I want to go finish the game if it's still a game. I don't know what the score is looking like. Let's do that. But um, it was a good, good day. It was amazing having Terry on. Um, mm-hmm. If you guys are just joining us or joining us later, make sure to go watch the beginning of the video because we had a special guest, Jay's friend and former NBA player, um, Terry DeHair. So mm-hmm. that was an incredible, incredible honor. Um, next week, next Thursday, uh, I have a fun draft plan. So mm-hmm. I will fill in the gentlemen. They don't know quite yet, but uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, do either of you two have any last <laughs> J? I have I have a final I do have a final world. One, it's 17 yes. 15 Bengals over the Dolphins, and I picked the Bengals. Um I did too. Um, H- um Haley. Yeah, you were, I know, on t- I know. You, were, you were on TikTok live and then you and your U A D A B C, I don't know all the letters in that thing. What is it? The U A D A Uda Uda Sports. If you guys Uda like sports. sports betting, go follow. Oh Uda Uda Sports. If you like sports betting, go follow Uda Sports. Um the U the the Uda Sports. And you both were picking Bengals. Who? No, no. Bengals. Who were you picking? No, in the Cowboys Giants game. Ah, uh, yeah. Who were you both we picking? Both- I'll well, pick the cow. I, I definitely picked the Giants. I, yes, I did. I okay, picked the Giants. Okay. You, and you all not picked because the Giants. I care. Okay, hold on. And just and who, I, and I just who picked the Cowboys? You, you did. You that, did. That's just my You're final. All word. your picks. All I was kept thinking about you because all your picks were right on. Jay and I missed a few, including yes, our Niners. Did. So yes, we did. We, we don't talk. That's about why that. you got to watch crunching the numbers on the Fired Up Network. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> yes, yes. All right, you guys. Thanks for joining us today. Love you all. Uh, we will see you next Thursday. And for now, Jake. Take it light, but take it. That's not ridiculous, though. Ridiculous to say that. <laughs> That's not what I.